me, even though Moses and Samuel were to both stand before me, my heart will not be with this people. Send them away from my presence and let them go. And it shall be that when they say to you, Where should we go? Then you are to tell them, Thus saith the Lord. Those destined for death to death, and for those destined for the sword to the sword, and those destined for famine to famine, and for those destined for captivity to captivity. The Russians are going to carry a lot of scientists, engineers, uh, medical uh, lab technicians back to Russia. Mothers and fathers, you're going to be separated from your family and carried back to Russia and to Japan or China when the two armies uh, collide here in the United States. Russia hitting the east coast of the United States, China hitting the west coast. A lot of you are going to be ripped from your families. Now this is God's justice and he's ordained this because of the wickedness of this nation. All of your answers for what's getting ready to happen to America is going to be in the book of Jeremiah. So I would encourage you to read Jeremiah. It was uh, two years ago. I kept hearing every day and every night. I kept hearing the neighing of stallions, the chomping of the bits, and the pounding of the hooves. And I would say, God, what is that? And he said, they're the enemies of the United States surrounding the country preparing to take it and take it hands down. So all of our enemies are now preparing to sack the United States. So a lot of you think that I am a total stock raven roaring lunatic. Well, let me let you in for a secret. The day that God showed me last Friday and I went into travail, over the United States and over the invasion of the Chinese invading army coming into America just for God God confirmed it by a lady I think named Ruby sent me the dreams and visions that she had back in the 60s and the 70s and she held off for for years before she ever gave them and what she gave was horrifying she basically said the same thing I said, but in more graphic detail. And so, that was God confirming to me that day last Friday, when I went into travail over the invading army that's coming to the west coast and to the east coast of the United States. God confirmed it in less than an hour. And he's confirming it by more people. Now, I do not read other people's prophecies. I don't look at other prophets because I don't want it to be influence me by looking at other people's prophecies uh, and then saying that I took them from them. Everything that I've got, I've gotten on my own by myself and got it through prayer and listening to what God's saying. So let's go on with chapter 15 real quick. And I will point over them four kinds of doom, declares the Lord, the sword to slay, which will be the enemies of the United States, dogs to drag off, and the birds of the sky and the beasts of the earth to devour and to destroy the beasts of the earth, the scorpions that I saw. I will make them an object of horror among the kingdoms of the earth. Now God, when America is finally taken out, all the nations of the earth are going to tremble and be horrified because they will not have America to help them anymore. And because of Manasseh, the son of Hezekiah, the king of Judah, for what he has done in Jerusalem. Now this goes back to the ungodly presidents that this nation has elected to run the country. The Bushes, the Clintons, Obama, Right on down the line, the last true president that we had running the United States was John F. Kennedy, and after that, the rest of the presidents have been nothing but puppet men run by the trilateral and the Illuminati and the world bankers. Indeed, who will have pity on you, O Jerusalem? 
Well, wait a minute. Let me go back. The dogs to drag off, the birds of the sky, the beasts of the earth to devour and to destroy, and I will make them an object and a horror among all the nations of the earth because of Manassas, the son of Hezekiah, the king of Judah, for what they did to Jerusalem. And indeed, who will have pity on you, America? Or who will mourn for you, America? Or who will turn aside to ask about your welfare, America, when this hour comes, which is coming very soon? You have forsaken me, declares the Lord. You kept going backwards. With all the natural disasters, the floods, the hurricanes, the fires of California, instead of repenting, you're increasingly getting wickeder. Wake up! Start thinking outside the box! So I will, stretch, <coughs> I will stretch out my hand against you and destroy you. God is going to stretch his hand out and destroy this nation. He's going to do it. But he's going to use our enemies to do it too. <clears throat> I am tired of relenting. God has been relenting and relenting and relenting. That's why it says in Revelation 18, pay her back double. The Christians kept paying it off and off and off and off. And now it's gone all the way up into heaven. Now he's going to pay it back double. And by the way, all of the chiefs of all the American Indians for every tribe, God wanted me to give you a word. And the word that I'm going to give you, says the Lord, is I am a God of justice, and I have not forgotten all the lies, the cruelty, the starvation, the broken treaties, the broken pacts, the broken covenants that this United States federal government and the United States Calvary did to you, the American Indians, and all you elders, all you Indians, listen to me. God has not forgot, and He is getting ready to vindicate you for all of what this federal government has done to you. Now you can pray uh, and ask God to have mercy, or you can just wait and see. But God is going to vindicate you, the American Indians, for what the European settlers did hundreds of years ago and during the 1800s of all the lies and everything that this federal government has done. God's going to vindicate you. But I encourage you, when He does, don't rejoice, but cry because it is going to be hard. The Lord says, I'm tired of relenting. I will widow, widow them with a winnowing fork at the gates of the land. I will bereave them of their children and I will destroy many people. America, you have not repented after your first wake-up call of the World Trade Centers. And you've not repented of your ways. Their widows will be more numerous before me than the sand of the sea. All of you women out there, there's not going to be very many men left. And remember I said in Isaiah that seven women will cling to one man, saying we'll provide our own little bit of apparel and our little bit of food. Just protect us from the gangs that are going to start to rule when war breaks out. <clears throat> I will bring against them and against the mother of a young man, a destroyer at noonday, and I will suddenly bring down on her anguish and dismay. She who bore seven sons pines away. Her breath, breathing, is labored. Her son has set while it was yet day. She has been ashamed and humiliated. So I will give over their survivors to the sword before their enemies, declares the Lord. Woe to me, my mother, that you have bore me as a man of strife and a man of contention to all the land. Now Jeremiah is wiped out. He sees what's coming. He's heartbroken. Got to stop again. <clears throat> all right, as you see here, <clears throat> Jeremiah the prophet He's wore out, he's tired, he's burnt out. 
He's ready to throw the towel in. It's the same with me. I have been given these messages for 30 years. I am hated, rejected, thrown out of the churches. The people do not want to hear it. But they do want to hear peace, love, and flower power. Jesus saves. Let's get saved so we don't go to this damnable place called hell and end up in this mystical place called heaven. The reason the condition of the United States is so bad is because the church has failed. The church has allowed the fallen ones to come into the leadership and take over. This is why such a uh, 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 catastrophic or a cataclysmic event is going to happen because the church has failed. The fallen ones have reestablished themselves in the leadership of the churches of the United States. To give you a perfect example of how this has happened, on most of the stages of your big mega churches, you have these rock and roll bands. The Satanists have seen to it that they've gotten in and deleted all the blood worship songs out of the worship. And it's basically become nothing but a social club. And the, the pastors are not addressing the wounds of God's people as though it's serious. Now Jeremiah is going through this, and like I said, all your answers pertaining to the United States of America and what's going to happen to it, and this is for church people, this is not for you, the non-believer. But what's happened is, the church has run amok now. And the church, we're coming to the end of the church age, or the fulfillment of the Gentiles, and now God's focus is going to be back on Israel. Now, what God had to do with me, he says, Jack, what I'm going to do for your son is, I'm going to fortify you like a wall of bronze. And when they come against you, basically, they're going to bounce off. I'm not a mean person. I'm not hateful. Um, but when, you, when you're doing what I do on the streets and in the churches, um, you become a very disliked person because you're bringing a truth and the people don't want to hear the truth. So God's sending them a lie. Begged and pleaded with him, these things are going to happen. Well, I come to find out, Sarah, my scribe, she found out there's 300 other prophets across the land that are saying the same identical thing I am. So, the other thing that God wanted me to share real quick is, is this. Oh, Lord. And he spoke this to me last night because I was basically ready. I just want to quit. I want to go find a cave and get it. You know, people kept saying, well, Paul's got a thorn in his side, oh, it's blindness, it's sickness, it's this, that, and the other. Well, actually, the thorn in Paul's side was none of the above. It was people worrying him to death over stupid stuff. And people worry me to death every day over stupid stuff. And it just it gets to wear you down. So for you Christians that see this YouTube, and believe in it, I encourage you please pray for me and lift me up. I, like I said, I get all your YouTubes, I get all your messages, but let me get back to this real quick. And then God spoke this to me last night and He said this, Then I will make to you, to this people, a fortified wall of bronze, even though they fight against you, they will not prevail over you. Thank God they haven't done that yet. For I am with you to save you and to deliver you, declares the Lord. So I will deliver you from the hand of the wicked, and I will redeem you from the grasp of the violent or the cruel. For all you other prophets out there that feel it's hopeless, keep on, keep on. And take chapter 15 of the book of Jeremiah and read it for yourself, and encourage yourself, and strengthen yourself with Jeremiah 15, verse 20. The other one I want to go to is real quick. In the churches today, most of the prophets who are prophesying are prophesying the delusions of their own minds, and a lot of them are doing no more than soothsaying or practicing witchcraft. They're not addressing the wounds of God's people as though it's serious. These prophets are not calling the congregations to repentance, and most of these prophets are false prophets. But let me read this to you real quick. Now this is Jeremiah 14, 13. But ah, Lord God, I said, look, the prophets are telling them, you will not see the sword, nor will you have famine, but I will give you land.